All right. I'm going to try and explain what's been going on with FTX, which is the largest crash in crypto history and probably the end of crypto. I'm going to try and do it as fast as I can. So here's this guy, Sam Bankman Free. He's like 30 years old and he's been described as a, as a wonder kid. He was put on the cover of Forbes as the next Warren Buffett, an investment god. He's also described as the most generous billionaire. Okay, the guy you see next to me is the most generous billionaire in the world. Hi, my name is Sam, and this is my story. Sam has crazy, crazy hair. hair. Sam lives in the Bahamas with 10 roommates. Sam is 29 years old only, but Sam has $22 billion. Or so he did, because as of today, he is worth exactly zero and facing jail time. So let's get into that. Uh, this kid, uh, Sam McMahon-Fried, went to, uh, I believe, MIT. And while at MIT, he graduated and started working at a trading firm. And he started trading uh, small amounts of crypto and other things like that. And eventually, according to legend, he found a arbitrage opportunity, which was basically that you could buy Bitcoin at a certain price in Japan and sell it at a different price in America. And he did that to make around $20 million. And when he did that, he started his own trading firm called Alameda Research, which was him and some other friends, basically these 10 people in the Bahamas, doing random crypto trades. And at first, the crypto trades were going pretty good because in 2017, 2018, crypto is a pretty small space and the real professional traders don't really want to get involved in it. But as it starts to grow, the opportunities for easy money go down because all the great traders get in and all the the high frequency traders get in. So he pivots to a new idea, which is instead of being a trader of crypto, he's going to be the exchange. So he creates FTX, which is the world's second largest crypto exchange. You may have seen it in the Super Bowl, where there was a commercial where Larry David warns you to not miss out on crypto. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. And he never, never was. <laughs> Don't be like Larry. Don't miss out on crypto, on NFTs, Franklin. on the next big thing. Yikes. So he launches FTX and for a while things are going good. He is starting to get big investment money from people that think of crypto as the next big thing and they want something safe. They know that crypto is becoming this big thing but they don't really understand it. They're afraid of being called out of touch and just saying that it seems like a scam. So they start investing big money but they want a safe option. And FTX, an exchange, almost like a bank, feels like a safe option. Here is an example. This is on Sequoia Capital, one of the most respected and biggest investment firms in uh, Silicon Valley. This is on their website. Actually, they just took it down today. <laughs> it was up yesterday. <laughs> they, they, they told a story about the pitch that Sam Bankman fried had to Sequoia. I want FTX to be a place where you can do anything with your next dollar. You can buy Bitcoin. You can send money in whatever currency to any friend anywhere in the world. You can buy a banana. Suddenly, the chat window on Sequoia's side of the Zoom lights up with partners freaking out. I love this founder, said one partner. I'm a 10 out of 10. Yes, exclaimed a third. That's dumb enough. But then we find out in the story, I sit 10 feet from him and I walked over thinking, oh shit, that was really good. And it turns out that fucker was playing League of Legends throughout the entire meeting. We were incredibly impressed. It was one of those, your hair is blown back type of meetings. <laughs> this dude was rambling about buying bananas in a fictional super app to so-called the smartest investors in Silicon Valley while playing bronze level League of Legends and they gave him hundreds of millions of dollars. Let me show you generally, and I have to move fast on this, how a bank works. Imagine you're a customer, this is your money. You take it and you give it. Option one, they take your money, they put it in a vault, and then later when you ask for it back, they give it to you. <laughs> That's not how most bank works. This is how Coinbase works, for example, because this is not necessarily a very good business. So what places like this do is they'll charge you fees when you trade, for example. Coinbase charges you fees when you trade. Option two is they take your money and they buy things with it. This is what this is what most banks will do. They'll do better investments than you will. And they'll give you a little bit of the extra money they're already making and they're making a lot of money. As long as like everything doesn't go down all at once, they're in pretty good shape if they want to pay you back out. If you need your money, they have enough money from all the money coming in to pay you. And the only way this really will go bad is if, you know, there's like a major, major, major market downturn and everything, okay? That's how a regular bank works. You know, there's definitely some risk here, but in general, it's okay, especially because in a real bank, all of your money is guaranteed up to $250,000. It's called the FDIC insurance. It doesn't matter if the bank goes out of business, the government will make you whole. Crypto has nothing like that. Understand that like there's a variety of things that can be in this basket here. So imagine if instead of buying uh, a house 
or real estate or things that generally are stable and appreciate in value, what if they bought a holographic Charizard? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? What if they took your money and they bought a holographic Charizard? Now, this is still something you can invest in. It can still go up in value. It's not nothing. It's worth something. Let's say you, say you give them $300,000 and they secretly buy a holographic Charizard. And then later you ask for your money back. Now, this thing technically is now worth $350,000. So they have your money. They have more than what you've given them, but they don't have it liquid. So in order to give you your money back, if you're asking for it, they would have to sell the Charizard, collect their money, keep a little bit of profit and give you your money back. Now, if it's one person asking for their money back, that's fine. But what if they've bought 100,000 Charizards? <laughs> and if everybody's asking for their money back at the same time, they can't sell all of these Charizards at once without tanking the value of Charizards. Suddenly a Charizard is very cheap because they're selling so many at once. Now imagine if instead of a Charizard, it was a dog shit crypto token <laughs> that doesn't even have any basic value to begin with. What if it's even worse than this? That ladies and gentlemen is what FTX is doing. Interrupt in the middle to bring you a note from Mr. Wonderful of Shark Tank, who had something to say about Sam Bankman fried Big advocate for Sam because he has two parents that are compliance lawyers. If there's ever a place I could be that I'm not gonna get in trouble, it's gonna be at FTX. So, oof! <laughs> you know, what they're doing right here is incredibly stupid. Buying, buying crypto with customers' uh, money, already stupid. But the real problem is this, that the uh, Alameda Research, which is the other company that he owns, was making all of these terrible, terrible bets on crypto with their CEO being a 28-year-old Harry Potter fan who also dated Sam Bankman Freed. <laughs> and I've seen interviews with her where it clearly shows she has no fucking idea what she's talking about when it comes to investment. You know, adjusted myself to, you know, okay, we're farming comp. Uh, and then it's like, oh, now we're farming these things that are like foods. And then now we're farming these like whatever weird like meta food things. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I did manage to get yeah, I get away from my initial skepticism and, and I'm embracing the mindset of like, great, I'm gonna like go out and look for like whatever, like the weirdest, dumbest thing people are talking about today. And like, that's gonna be the thing I'm working on today. She literally has no fucking idea. And these guys are losing money hand over fist. They're just, they're, they're, they're investing in all sorts of wild things. And so Sam Bankman Freed starts taking money out of customer deposits at FTX and secretly funding Alameda research illegally. This is illegal. That is where this becomes an Enron moment. This is where it comes like a, this guy's probably going to jail moment. They were loaning it to Alameda and they were getting in return something called FTT token. FTT token is a made up crypto token that was made up by FTX that was basically supported by the profits from FTX. FTX was buying this token regularly to keep it pumped up. It came out recently after a leak that almost all of the money on their books, it's just FTT token. <laughs> they had a bunch of FTT token that they said was worth the exact amount of everyone's deposits. And so people realized, wait a minute, if we ask for our money back, you can't sell these to get enough value to make all our money back. Like our money no longer exists in this vault. It's just a bunch of this fucking token. And so once that leak comes out, the CEO of Binance, which is this guy, uh, basically says, I own a good amount of FTT token and I'm gonna dump it all. And that's gonna make the price of this crash because it already is a shaky investment. It's not really worth what you say it is. Once he says that, every person who has money in FTX's vault realizes, fuck, this place is gonna go down. So they all start trying to frantically pull their money out, which of course causes this to start to crash. The whole house of cards unwinds. Overnight, literally overnight, FTX collapses as an entity. They just simply do not have the money. And so, Binance originally offers to buy up FTX for like a dollar, just basically buy it up. But then they look at FTX's books and they realize FTX is in so much debt that if they buy FTX, it'll probably bankrupt them. <laughs> so now nobody is buying FTX. Nobody can get their money out, uh, including this fucking man, Tom Brady, <laughs> who's probably gonna have to play football until he's fucking 59 now. <laughs> places like TSM, places like uh, the Miami Heat, all of which accepted major FTX sponsorship deals that lasted 10 plus years are all not getting paid. TSM is built almost entirely on this FTX money, which is not getting paid. I predict, you know, we're gonna see like 
legitimately Mr. Beast might buy TSM. I'm not even kidding. Uh, why did anyone catch this? Well, all of the audits for FTX were performed by the first ever CPA firm in the metaverse. <laughs> this is the firm that Wall Street relied upon to do accurate accounting on fucking FTX. Now, let's talk about Binance real quick before we get on. Because remember yesterday or two days ago, I talked about this and someone said, yeah, okay, FTX is dead, but Binance is fine. And I said, Pepe laugh. Because guess what? As of today, a few hours ago, <laughs> It shows that Binance's reserves are almost half of its holdings in its own tokens. It's the same problem. So crypto as a whole, basically every exchange, but maybe buying Bitcoin on Coinbase is fucking fraudulent. It's all fraudulent all the way down. It's all a massive Ponzi scheme. And again, this wasn't hard to find out. So Sam Fried went on a podcast when he was at the height of his fame and power and he was asked business questions about what he does. And he basically pulled no punches in describing word for word a Ponzi scheme. He said, imagine this money as a magic box that you put money into and then little bits of money come out. Well, everybody wants to be involved in that box so they keep giving you money to put in there. He basically said that, like I'm not even changing too many words. Uh, Matt Levine on the podcast said this. I, I think of myself as like a fairly cynical person and yep. that was so much more cynical <laughs> yeah, than this, I, how I would have described farming. Like, you're just like, well, I'm in the Ponzi business and it's pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> And nobody called him out. And this guy kept on living as a billionaire and crushing it for another like year after this. Because again, I, this guy's this guy's absolutely the modern day version of Enron. By the way, guess who is appointed as the new CEO of FTX today in order to oversee its liquidation? John J. Ray, the guy that liquidated Enron 20 years ago. It's a full circle. This dude's back. Oh, here, here's a little cherry to end it on. <laughs> Update, as of a few minutes ago, FTX official and FTX US's wallets have been hacked with over $600 million leaving the exchange late Friday. It's convenient, hacked. I'm sure this is a, probably a last minute looting by people that had access in the Bahamas to whatever was left of this fucking absolute Ponzi scheme. Rarely rich people go to jail, unfortunate spy product of the system. But thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, these guys aren't rich. <laughs> Almost, I mean, SBF's current amount is uh, $1 of, of value. One group I really want to call out specifically are people that uh, took all of FTX's money and shilled it relentlessly. I don't want to name names, but there are many, many YouTubers that I've seen in the space that, <laughs> not financial advice, did a ton of shilling for FTX, including TSM, by the way, I'm talking about TSM. There should be some accountability on, on where this money's coming from when you talk about it and sell it to people. You know, we've done stuff on our side with Coinbase, but before we agreed to it, we had to look in the business model of Coinbase to make sure it made any sense. I don't think Coinbase is the stock I would buy. I'm not, I wouldn't invest in it. But I do believe that they have a business model where they at least don't, they hold your money. You give them their money, they hold it and then give it back to you. Uh, I don't like it. And I hope we get to a situation where People have a little bit of credibility or a little bit of ounce of shame before taking any possible sponsor that comes their way. But that's it. That's that's sort of the basic coverage of what's going on in the world of FTX. And it's gonna to lead to a lot of terrible, terrible knock-on effects in the world of crypto. I think if you have any money in crypto at all that isn't like, I don't know, Bitcoin on your own wallet, I would be very concerned.